Oh my goodness, where's my hat? You know when your hair is just in that awkward stage where nothing does what it's supposed to do? That's where we're at. Moo. Hi, my name's SDR Cow and I'm going to be doing a ball jointed doll body review today. I've had a lot of people ask about my Supia's um, ballerina body and I feel like today is the day we're gonna get shit done. Hopefully. So I've recorded this video twice and it's awkward each time so we're just gonna go third time's the charm and bada bing bada boom. This right here is my Supia Hale who happens to be on the Supia ballerina body which, uh, spoiler alert, I love. Like 9 out of 10. And there's no bodies that get like a 10 out of 10 in my book, so that's pretty up there on the list. She is my new standard of Waltrim to Doll bodies in the SD range. So yeah, let's get started, shall we? So generally my body reviews are done voiceover. I'm going to try to do this more of an in-person kind of vibe. I don't know. Um, and that being said, we're just going to talk about what we've got going on. So right here we'll talk about range of motion on the headpiece. Um, in all of my finer detail talkings, I usually do at the end anyway, because nobody wants to sit there and listen to that, so here we go. This is, uh, side to side, um, up and down. She has a pretty good range. We're gonna go ahead and remove her wig. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave her wig, because nobody really cares. Actually, yeah, that is important. <laughs> Wouldn't be a video of mine if, uh, a piece of resin didn't go flying off of the table. So, ignore these fun tendrils, because, uh, I said so. Put them on there because it helps with making wigs look more realistic. If you want more hacks like that, let me know. As you can see, she has a head cap. It's pretty common in the ball jointed doll community. Held together with magnets and just two little pegs that kind of go into place there. This happens to be just a balloon. Again, it assists with the wig, allowing it to have more grip so it doesn't slide because resin is a very smooth material. And uh, all of that to be said, I think that was on upside down. It was. Um, I think that covers the head. So let's move on down to what is my favorite part of this doll, which is the shoulders. The cool thing about this doll is, and I feel like it's kind of a trend that's starting with doll, doll companies, is they're, they're adding this extra piece in the shoulder, which is this little dookie right here. And that allows for a lot more of a natural range of motion on your doll. So there's a difference to me between range of motion, which could be, you know, whatever you want it to be, and realistic range of motion. So just because they've added this joint doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good range of motion because if the human body doesn't move like that, what's the point? So all that to be said, I do really enjoy this piece for the fact that it allows your doll to be able to do like this pose. Which, if I have my hands behind my back, I'm not sitting there like this. I'm generally like this. You know, if that makes sense. So, those kinds of things are very important to me because when I do my photography, I like a realistic pose. I like a realistic um, vibe, you know? So, because of that, I can move her shoulders forward. <laughs> um, but forward and back, you know? And I just think that's fantastic. She can kind of do that whole shruggy motion. Not as much as some other doll companies. I've seen some that you can get that real high, super arched, super stylized um, angle, which I actually like. But this one's a little bit toned down on that level. She's not as quite that extreme, but she's not that stylized of a doll either. So that's kind of like the shoulder mechanic. And then everything else that goes with it is your basic standard, you know, up, down, all around, the whole movement thing. There's nothing else really to note there. If you've seen one doll video review, you've seen them all in terms of the shoulder socket. You know, get that whole thing. Now we're gonna move down to her elbows, which I happen to really, really like. I think this is a very natural looking elbow. The way they've sculpted it, they've done a really great job. I feel like it's actually secure too. A lot of times with the double jointed um, body and uh, elbows, you get that peanut piece, which is just, you know, the extra piece of resin, which is what I would consider this. But it's so flippity floppity bippity boppity, you can't really control it. And this, I feel like, has enough grooves and details and sculpting in it that it feels pretty secure. Like, I can still move her left to right, which is really great. Like, that kind of whole thing, but not too much, you know? I, it's still not going to just slide all the way around and be facing backwards kind of thing. Now, when it is extended fully and doing its full job of going up to touch the face, it is very square to me. Like, you know, it's not the nice little point that you would normally get. I really feel like... Fairyland is probably one of the only bodies that I like as a fully extended double joint, but it's not bad. For everything that I've seen in comparison, 
I don't hate it. It's not ugly, as ugly as it could be. Um, and they've done a really, really good job with it. Again, I love the 90 degree pose. I think that is so pretty. But uh, she is double jointed, so there's that kind of range up there. You can see she can definitely touch her face. She can touch her shoulder. So that's a great range of motion to me. Moving down to the wrists. Wrists are just kind of like the shoulder joint where it's pretty stereotypic. It's the same. Nothing super crazy there. If you've had a soupy in the past or had just any doll in general, there's nothing special to note. It's all about the same. But moving down further from the shoulders to the chest piece, her torso is in three pieces. You have the lower piece, the tummy section, and then the upper chest piece. I generally prefer a two-piece torso. That's just me, just because I feel like as humans we generally move right here. That's kind of where we, we reside our actual natural movement. We don't move up here, which is where this joint is. Um, that's kind of breaking a rib cage, but I also understand why that's there on a doll because it helps a lot in hiding that seam line. But her range of motion with this chest piece is ridiculous. Like, I'm gonna show her butt a bit so we can kind of do this whole motion. See that back breaking pose? So if I wanted her to lay down on a table, she could totally, you know, do that arm up pose. Um, range of motion forward is not as grand because the boobs obviously prevent her from sliding forward, but she sits up straight just fine, and then her range back is pretty great. Side to side is your typical, you know, do your thing. Since we're here, we'll go ahead and talk about this waist joint. I've had waist joint dolls in the past that I, I have no idea why it was even a thing, because you couldn't move them. You know, they had an internal piece that went down so far into the lower cavity that there was not a point for the joint, and it just seemed really, really stupid. This one, at least, they've done a great job in terms of you can actually pop it out, and with clothes on, you don't see any of this, but pop it out, and you can make these hip poses, and she's a ballerina body, so she's supposed to be able to get these really extravagant kind of poses. Um, forward on it isn't, again, it's not the greatest. The sculpting is really, really pretty. I have my light set to the side, so hopefully you can kind of see some of the shadows. I also like that she's a bit thicker than the standard doll. And then here's the back. I could do some of that. So she is not as detailed as like the first gen Supia body, but the first gen Supia body does not pose anywhere near what she does. So take that for what you will and we'll move on to her leg wells. I I, I don't know how I feel about these yet. I feel like they're pretty standard. Um, she sits, obviously she's holding that pose and now that I say that she's gonna slide. But um, she sits, she can sit just fine. I can throw her down, kind of finagle her a bit and she's gonna sit up as you can kind of see. I know she's kind of cut out of the frame but you get the idea. And that's pretty much all I had to note about these leg wells. They're kind of finicky, but most dolls have finicky leg wells. So they have some grooves cut in to kind of create some some locking mechanisms, but I don't necessarily see anything amazing about them. I've hot glue suede these to make them stay better, so again, I wouldn't note anything special or spectacular about them. Kind of the same as moving further down, this joint right here, yet another thing that I don't necessarily think is spectacular. I do like having it for the fact that whenever she is in like a dress or something and I want to pop her legs up, I can still do that and still have her be able to sit and kind of have some stability so I don't feel like she's just rolling around on whatever surface I have her sitting on. There is a, oh, that scared me. There is a, uh, you can see this piece has these notches and lips and everything to kind of assist with different poses. However, these back lips down here on the bottom where my pinky is, I don't know why they're there. It's kind of one of those things again, like it's like it's there, but it doesn't really do anything and might as well not be. I guess it probably assists a tiny bit in some uh, locking, and, but nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing to note, I should say. So we'll move down further to her knees. I really like the way her legs look when they're at a straight, you know, they're, they're straight pose. Um, I like the way the knees kind of are inset a little bit. I like the sculpting on them. I'm trying to keep a shadow going. Not the hugest fan of them, like on the, the elbows. I love them at a 90 degree. These guys, not so much. When you get pretty knees, you generally get floppy dolls. So that being said, you've got to have some bulky pieces down here to keep your doll standing up straight when you need it to stand up straight. So I totally accept that 
it's not going to be the prettiest, but I feel like she's solid when she stands. Not on these feet, obviously, but um, yeah, as a whole, I do, I do like this body. Um, the knees don't look great, but they work amazingly, so she can definitely get a pretty high angle there without popping out of socket. There's the back of them, if you're interested in those at all. And then, talking about her feet, these are her ballerina feet that come with the ballerina body. I've seen a lot of people asking if the ballerina body comes with the feet, are the feet extra, can you buy them separately? I'm not, I think you can buy them separately, but they came with my ballerina body. I didn't do any extra optional parts, I just said, hey, I want the ballerina body, and they came with her. Um, once on, this is all they're doing. They're not turning, they're not moving around, they are strictly for this specific pose, which makes complete sense because what else are you gonna do when your foot is on that level? The other feet that came with her were her flat feet, which is the standard Supia flat foot. If you are familiar with her old, the old body, which I literally have right over there I could go get, but I'm just too lazy, um, the ankles were always kind of a, what's going on? situation. These they have they have scaled that back to where they just look like they're just there. They're not they're not so scary looking. So um, that being said, they've improved the appearance of the ankles and uh, the mobility is basically just up and down, your standard foot up and down. There's not really a side to side. Most dolls don't generally do that, but um, up and down is pretty great. And then the same with the heeled feet, they kind of go up and down a little bit, but the range is a little bit less. So the pointier you get the feet, the less range you have for going up and down. And that, that's just what the heeled foot looks like. So I have all three. The heeled feet with this particular body, if you're buying it from the company, is an extra. It does not come with the heeled feet. It comes with the ballerina feet and the flat feet. Um, and then the hands, there's no extra hands, it just comes with those two hands as well. So you get the hands, two pairs of feet, and then whatever sculpt you picked. There's all of that. Pretty sure that's everything that I wanted to talk about. If you guys have any questions, feel free, shoot me a message on my Instagram, shoot me a message on DeviantArt. You can even try to contact me via here on YouTube. I kind of am getting better about keeping up with that. Um, also, you can shoot me a message on one of my random live streams that may or may not happen soon. I have started streaming my uh, doll editing process. So whenever I'm jumping on Photoshop and I'm editing a doll photo, I will generally turn on my stream. I think that's how I'm going to start doing things. So if you're seeing this in the future um, and I'm not doing it anymore, that sucks. <laughs> but uh, as of right now, for the current year, I will be trying to stream some things just for funsies, just to kind of engage more. I really miss talking to my community um, and I use my DeviantArt as an old reference point. Like I loved being able to talk to people on that platform and I don't feel like Instagram offers me that. So I'm trying to figure out ways to communicate with people better because just the comment section, I don't know, it's not my vibe. I cannot get this wig to go back on her head. Why are you fighting me, ho? Like, stop. You're embarrassing me on camera. Why are you being weird? Well, there's something caught somewhere, but it's fine. So uh, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video and uh, Okay, bye.